I've covered a number of divisive and controversial films in this channel, so let's cover another one. Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and that third R, Rashad, will be joining us shortly, and today we're going to be talking about Mandingo from 1975. This film was nearly universally hated by critics upon its release, but over the years it has been reassessed more favorably. Quentin Tarantino drew inspiration from it for his film, Django Unchained. And my fellow Grindhouse Cinema Database reviewer Josiah Howard wrote nice things about it in his review in his book Black Exploitation Cinema, The Essential Reference Guide. And yet still today, some consider the movie to be vile and offensive racist trash. What did you think about the movie, Rashad? trying to be long-winded here Rob because I know this is your video this is your review I am a guest <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm a try to be as brief as possible thank you once again for inviting me on the channel this time you got me watching Mandingo and I heard about this movie through Nutty Professor 2 the clumps where Grandma Clump told Buddy Love that he looked just like Ken Norton in that movie Mandingo never watched it though until now and the timing of this is kind of crazy because I just got done watching Emancipation with Will Smith and I swore up and down, I was never going to watch another slave movie, right? And you're like, bro, this is a slave movie. And I said, well, this is a 70s slave movie, okay? And you got to think at the time, 70s, black exploitation, you know, it, it's probably going to be tame as compared to now. Because back in the 70s, you know, black folks, we were, we were superheroes at the time. So there's no way it's going to top Emancipation or 12 Years a Slave, you know what I mean? I was wrong. This movie pissed me off. I was infuriated. Let me tell you something. I was angry watching this. I, I was angry, enraged, and listen, disclaimer though, I'm, I'm not angry at white people, okay? I'm angry at those white people. I'm angry at those white people that did that, okay? In the movie, and then what happened back in the day. I don't give a damn if they was acting, because some of that acting was way too, too good. You know, sometimes you play a role so good where you're like, wait a minute, they played that role a little too well. Something makes me think they might be really that way. All right, so, yo, if you're black, this movie should piss you off, all right? If you're not a racist white person, if, if you're an ally of ours, this movie should piss you off. This is one of those I call, I wish a mother would, because throughout the movie, I kept saying, I wish a mother would. I don't give it. Listen, you remember, Rashad, if you was back in the slavery days, you'd be picking kind of like everybody else. Yeah, I probably would have. But with the brain that I have now, I wish a put their hands on me we moving furniture and you, you have to kill me look i'll go out like the one slave okay the one so i forgot what his name was the other tall guy i done went out like him i just say after you hang me kiss my ass all right i ain't finna i'm gonna i die a man on my feet than to die a slave getting whipped by y'all mother every day y'all by the way that's the same toothless guy from harlem knights that cursed out uh richard Pryor. you know those little kids bring me bad luck <laughs> that guy Yes, Kid Norton is in this movie, and Kid Norton, I was kind of nervous because I'm like, the boxer Kid Norton, the same Kid Norton that went two fights with Muhammad Ali, excuse me, three fights with Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, yeah, and this dude is built like a f***ing Adonis, George, I mean, uh, Kid Norton is like a solid, this, this dude's got muscles on top of muscles, just think, he was almost cast as Apollo Creed, <laughs> play that in your mind, play that in your mind, Sly Stallone in the ring with Kid Norton, especially the way he looked in this movie. Yeah, no wonder he didn't get the job. So Ken Norton is in here, and he he's, he's okay in the movie. He doesn't have a lot of dialogue. You could tell a lot of his stuff was ADR, where they added in later on. I think he, he might have been dubbed. I'm not sure, but he, he was he was fine in the role. He just All they needed was somebody with physicality, and that's what he brought. And uh, Perry King is also in here, and Perry King, I know him from Lords of Flatbush with Sylvester Stallone. He also did one of my favorite movies, Class of 1984. He plays uh, Hammond, what's his name? Hammond Maxwell. The son of Warren Maxwell, the uh, plantation owner, he walks with a limp. He's he's one of, he's one of the good ones, you know. what I'm saying he's like he's he's the slave master that you know he's one of the good slave masters. He, he's good he's good does need rules. He's not like the rest of them. them uh, no, well, he ended up being you know. It, it's just always funny. You want to see a person's true colors get him drunk and get him pissed the f off because that's what happened. I always say that you if you want to see a person's true nature, get him drunk and get him pissed the f off. And boy, when he got pissed off, he showed his true colors. He ended up being worse than his daddy. 
Now, I'm assuming you're getting into the spoilers here. Well, I don't want to spoil too much. Like I said, this is your video, man, so I'm, I'm going to let you do it. But there's so much I want to say. I might have to do my own review on this, man, because there was just so much... Like, so many things about this movie. And I'm like, what was, like, because you got to think, when you're watching a film, what is the director trying to say? What, what is he trying to convey? What what message is he trying to send? Like, what kind of story is he trying to tell? You know, this is just about these plantation owners uh, scouting Negroes, scouting black people, examining them, checking them out, you know. Then he buys, he uses Ken Norton for cockfighting, human cockfighting where he brutally beats this guy to death, where he rips out his juggling with his teeth, almost dies, and he's like the hero now to the slave owners. Everybody wants a piece of him. They, they wanna, they're they willing to pay $10,000 for this guy. Perry King, the Perry King character, uh, what was his name again? The guy with the limb. I, I forgot that quick. I don't smoke weed either, y'all. <laughs> he loves the guy. He's like, yo, this I like this dude. So they almost have somewhat of a friendship. And also, he has a black mistress, who he calls his, his uh, bedwench or whatever. But man, once this particular thing happens, all that friendship shit goes out the window. She became just another nigga to him. And what really drove it home, <laughs> what really drove it home was when he <sighs> There's nothing redeeming about this movie. Like, okay, you watch Django Unchained. Yeah, you see the stuff in Django Unchained, but Django got his payback. You watch a movie like Glory. Glory was kind of up but glory at the end they all came together they all fought together as a unit as a collective okay it worked okay you watch 12 years a slave your boy's 12 years a slave but he got out okay he's out of there the nightmare's over with like there's nothing about this movie that's redeeming where you could say damn that was a good ass movie no i hate it but from a technical standpoint yes the movie was was shot pretty well it was well acted it was well executed um it, the film looked good okay but, God, yeah, man, I'm, I'm not going to give this movie a grade because if I give this movie, like, a low grade, it's because, like, this is a bad movie. This is not really technically a bad movie, but it's just a very offensive movie. This is a very offensive, uh, racist piece of <laughs> film that doesn't even belong to black exploitation. I don't give, you know what, I don't want to hear nobody, t after seeing this, shit, yo, I don't want to hear nobody talk about the black exploitation era again. You know what I'm saying? Because at least in black exploitation movies, we walked away with a heads up. Yo, at the end, we, we got back at Whitey and we came out as superheroes. This movie, we, my man got <laughs> Miss me with that shit. My pressure's up now. All right, Rob, thank you once again, bro, to the next episode. I'm out. Thank you for joining me, Rashad, and for watching this difficult film. I wasn't sure what you would think about it, and I am sorry for getting your pressure up. We're still cool, right? What I think is interesting about Mandingo is I agree with Rashad's points. This movie is vile and maybe even racist, and there is nothing redeeming about its story, which is exactly why I think we should watch it. <laughs> when I know that sounds terrible, uh, let me explain myself. Actually, let me read something that explains myself better than I could myself. This is a passage from How to Tell a True War Story by Tim O'Brien. It is by far my favorite short story of all time. A true war story is never moral. It does not instruct, nor encourage virtue, nor suggest models of proper human behavior, nor restrain men from doing the things they have always done. If a story seems moral, do not believe it. If at the end of a war story you feel uplifted, or you feel that some small bit of rectitude has been salvaged from the larger waste, then you have been made the victim of a very old and terrible lie. There is no rectitude whatsoever. There is no virtue. As a first rule of thumb, therefore, you can tell a true war story by its absolute and uncompromising allegiance to obscenity and evil. What Tim O'Brien says here about war stories, we could easily say about slave stories. If at the end of a slave story we feel some small piece of justice has been achieved, we have just bought into a terrible lie. Now, like Rashad, I love revenge stories. These are so satisfying. Coffee, Death Wish, some of my favorite movies of all time. But as much as I love Django getting revenge against the people who killed his friend and enslaved his wife, that's some Hollywood right there. We come out of Django feeling a little sad, sure, but also a little uplifted. We just watched a little sliver of justice in an otherwise unjust situation, and like Brunhilde, we smile. Smiling at the end of a slave movie, that's how you know that ain't true. 
Of course, there's a place for escapist entertainment. I love escapist entertainment. I love Django Unchained, and there's definitely a place for that. But I also think there's a place for Mandingo. It's cruel and vile, and you come out of it feeling angry and dirty. But that's exactly how we should feel when we confront America's slave history. There's something, I think, important about having the right kind of emotional response to the truth, rather than a kind of uplifted response to Hollywood puffery. So watch Mandingo, and feel dirty, and enraged. That's how you know that was true, even if it didn't happen.